Hey guys, welcome to the workshop. My name's Lucas, and today I'm gonna to be showing you how I make these super cheap VR gloves that let me use my hands in virtual reality. And I'm gonna show you how you can build your own as well. So stick around. They track your hands and connect to your computer using USB or Bluetooth and send the data to your computer so that you can play Steam VR games using the gloves. You can walk around with joystick inputs, press buttons to use spells or items, and you can use these gloves in any Steam VR game that's compatible with Valve Index controllers. By the way, if you guys are interested in seeing updates on the haptic feedback, definitely stick to the end of the video because I'm going to be showing you a little sneak peek there. These gloves are compatible with any PC VR headset that works with Steam VR. So that includes Oculus Rift, Oculus Quest, as long as you have Link, HTC Vive, Valve Index, you name it. All right, let's get right into it. Here's what you're gonna need to build the gloves. 10K ohm potentiometers to measure the position of our fingers. Retractable badge reels to keep tension on our string. The glove uses a microcontroller to process inputs. You can use these Arduino Nanos. I got these clones for about $3 each. Or, if you want Bluetooth, you can use ESP32 dev boards. I got these for about 4 to $5 each. You're also going to need a way to wire everything up. Personally, I prefer to use 22 gauge wire and crimp everything myself, but you can also just solder wires or even use pre-crimped wires with a breadboard for the easiest build. You're also going to need a way to mount your controllers or trackers to your hand to be able to measure the position of your hand. I use elastic straps for this, but you could probably use Velcro or rope as well. I'll be releasing some 3D printed mounts for controllers as well, so those will be a lot more robust later on. You can optionally add joysticks and buttons to the glove to give you more inputs to use in-game, for walking around and using items. Here's a couple different joystick options in all shapes and sizes. And you can use pretty much any buttons that are compatible with Arduino. Now let's talk glove materials. You can use pretty much any type of glove you have laying around, but here's a couple good options. Work gloves are a pretty good option if you want something that's pretty durable and rigid. Thin leather gloves are a good option for durability and flexibility. Now if you're looking to go dirt cheap and hit that $22 mark, nylon or cotton inspection gloves are super low cost in bulk. Or you could go with not using a glove material at all and just use your hands. That's totally fine, but I wouldn't recommend it. For this video I'm going to be using golf gloves since they have great breathability and flexibility. You will need a 3D printer for this project as some of our parts are 3D printed. However, there are some people on our Discord server that might be able to help you out. Links in the description. But I'm considering also making a non-3D printer version that doesn't require 3D printed parts. Let me know in the comments if you guys would be interested in that. For now, this project does require a VR-ready PC as we're going through Steam VR. If you're on an Oculus Quest, you can use it as long as you have a PC. You just need to use Oculus Link or Virtual Desktop. All right, let's get to printing the parts. All the STL files for 3D printing can be found in the hardware folder under the GitHub release in the description. I printed my parts on my Ender 3 in plain old PLA. You can print your parts in the orientation you see here. I designed these parts to print without support structure, so you can use support for the holders if you need. I recommend printing one of each part first to make sure it looks good before going ahead and printing everything else. For each hand, you're going to need to print 5 spools, 5 tensioners, 5 covers, 5 holders, and 15 guide nodes, and also 5 end caps. One part you're going to need to experiment with is the end caps. You're going to need to print one of these for each finger, but it has to fit the size of your finger perfectly. So you're going to need to resize it in your slicer until it fits your hand. Personally, I just print a bunch of sizes until I find one that fits each finger. Alright, let's hop in and get to building. Alright, let's start by building the reels. This is the part that's going to take the movement of the string from our fingers and translate it into rotation of the potentiometer. First, get your badge reels, the potentiometers, and the nuts that came with them. Now crack open your badge reels like this, and take out the spring inside of them. Take the string too. Now take the tensioner, which is this 3D printed part, and fit the nut into the hexagon shaped hole. Now you should be able to screw in a potentiometer underneath. Get that nice and tight. Now fit the spring into this hole here, and then rotate it 90 degrees. Now start coiling it around this part. Now wind the spring around once or twice depending on how hard you want the spring to be. And then fit the spring inside of the slit on the shaft of the potentiometer. Once you do this, you should now have a spring loaded potentiometer that will spring back once you rotate it and let go. Now you're going to take your spool part which looks like this. 
and you're gonna fit this string through this hole. Use a sewing needle or pin if you need. Tie a knot on one end and then pull the string tight and you should have it attached to the spool now. Now, making sure that the end of the spring is tucked in, you're gonna fit the spool on top of this tensioner part. Now you have a spring-loaded spool, which is gonna work the same way that the badge reels do, except now we can measure the position with those potentiometers. Now we can fit the cover piece on. Feed the string from the inside through this hole in the cover piece. Now pull the string through and fit the tensioner and the cover piece together. They should just snap in place together. Now spin the cover piece clockwise and it'll start winding the rest of the string up. From here you should be able to just tug the string to rotate the reel and it should spring back smoothly and quickly. Now your reel's done. Go ahead and make five of these per hand, so ten total if you're making two hands. Alright, now that we have our reels ready, let's put the glove together. The potentiometer backs from the reels that we just built should snap right into the holders that we printed. Now put an end cap on each of your fingers, making sure that it's sized correctly. Now glue two or three guide nodes onto the back of each of your fingers. I'm using hot glue for this. Now you can either glue your badge holders onto the glove itself, or you can attach them using elastic or rope using the included holes. Here's how it looks all together. You can have the thumb together or separate depending on how you want the shape to look. Next you're going to feed the string through the guide nodes by snapping it through the slits. Now attach the string to the end caps, either by tying a knot or by wrapping it around a couple times. Now when you open and close your fingers, the spool should rotate responsibly. Now do the same thing for the rest of the fingers. Now you should see all of the spools responding to your finger movements. Alright, now we can wire the glove up. First we're going to wire the potentiometer so that we can get finger tracking working. Here's the three pins on each potentiometer. We're going to wire the two outside pins to 5 volts and ground on our Arduino pins, and then we're going to wire the middle pin to one of the analog pins on our Arduino. This is what the entire circuit looks like. Let's break it down. First, we connect the middle wires to the analog pins on the Arduino. On the Nano, this corresponds to A0 through A4. Next, we connect all of the potentiometers on one side to the ground pin of our Arduino. Now we connect the other side of the potentiometers to the 5 volt line of the Arduino. Keep in mind if you're using an ESP32 instead of an Arduino, then you need to use 3.3 volts instead of 5 volts. So how do we get the single ground or voltage pin from our microcontroller and split it up into 5 different potentiometers? Well there's a few different ways we can do this. One is to solder a splitter that splits from one wire into 5 wires. Another way which would be a lot less work would be just to use a breadboard to split up the wires. Though personally I prefer to daisy chain my wires using crimps. If you have the right tools it's a lot less work. You can either solder directly onto the potentiometers, or you can crimp connectors that you can plug into them. I found that JST connectors work really well. You can also use pre-crimped wires like the kind you'd find in an Arduino kit. Here it is fully wired and connected to the Arduino. If you guys have any issues with wiring, feel free to join the Discord server and there are people that can help you out. Or check out the resources in the description. As far as routing your wires, you can use the built-in wire conduits in the holder part, or you can 3D print the wire covers that are also included in the STL files. Those slide right on the back of the holder pieces. If you're using a joystick, you're also going to have to wire that up as well. Most joystick modules have pins for a 5 volt and a ground lead, as well as two analog inputs for the X and Y axis. I plug those analog inputs into A6 and A7 on the Arduino. If you're using buttons as well, they're pretty easy to wire. All you have to do is connect one side to ground and one side to a digital pin, like D3, and then let the internal pull-up resistor do its work. Now once you have a fully wired up VR glove, the next step is to start putting firmware on it. In order to be able to flash firmware on the Arduinos, you're going to need to make sure that you have Arduino IDE installed. If you're using nano clones like me, you may also have to install the CH340 driver. I'll leave a link to both of those in the description. If you're using an ESP32 instead of an Arduino, you're going to need the Arduino IDE libraries for that. I'll leave instructions for how to do that in the description. The firmware code that you'll need is available from the same GitHub link as the 3D printing stuff that you got before. Alright, now let's go ahead and get the firmware ready to upload to the board. Inside the firmware folder, you're going to open the Lucid Gloves firmware folder inside of that, and then open the Lucid Gloves firmware.eno file. This should let us edit our firmware inside of Arduino IDE. Now the first file you're going to see open is a configuration file that's going to let you change some settings to make my firmware better fit your needs. Up here you can change the type of communication. For now it's set to just regular USB serial, but I'll show you how to change it to Bluetooth serial later on. For the maximum analog value, if you're on an ESP32 you're going to have to change this 1023 to a 4095. 
Otherwise, if you're on an Arduino Nano, keep it at 1023. If you wired your potentiometers backwards and need to flip them, you can change this setting right here. You can change the settings for your joysticks right here, like whether or not you're using a joystick and if you need to flip any values for the joystick. This is the most important setting right here. This is where you can change the pin numbers, so if you wired anything differently on your board from how I wired it, you can change all of your pin numbers right here. If you're using an Arduino, you can change your pin numbers under AVR, and if you're using an ESP32, you can change your pin numbers under where it says ESP32. Definitely make sure the pin numbers under your correct section are accurate to how you wired it. There are some smaller extra settings in this file. Documentation for those are linked down below if you want to mess with them. Alright, now let's upload firmware to the board. Go into Tools and make sure that you have the correct board selected and the correct USB port. And once that's done, go ahead and click the Upload button to upload the firmware to your board. If your firmware uploads successfully, now you can check to see if it's working by opening the Serial Monitor in the Tools tab. Now change the baud rate to 115200 and you should get an output that looks something like this. Alright, now once you're ready, go ahead and put the glove on for a full test. Now what you're looking for is for the first five numbers in the list to get bigger and smaller depending on when you open and close your fingers. If you've got that, then you're golden. Now at this point, you're ready to set up the driver and start trying out the gloves in VR. Now to get the gloves working in Steam VR, you're going to need open gloves. That's the open source VR driver that Dan and I have been working on programming together. You can download it for totally free on Steam. Okay, so first make sure you have Steam VR installed, and then install the open gloves driver through Steam. Go ahead and download the open gloves driver and open it through Steam. You should see a configuration window pop up. This is going to let you change settings in the driver to make it work with your gloves. If you're using only one glove here, you can disable the other one. So for example, if you're using just the left hand, then you can disable the right hand to use a controller in that one. This setting lets you change whether or not you have knuckles emulation on or off. What this means is our driver pretends to be Valve Index controllers to increase game compatibility. I recommend keeping this on knuckle driver. Next is the pose settings, which lets us tell the driver where our hand is in relation to the controller or tracker. I'm going to go over these more in a bit. Now in this communication protocol section, you're going to want to make sure that you set the left and right COM ports to the ports that you use to flash the firmware in the Arduino. That's going to be in the tool section on Arduino IDE. Under the encoding protocol, make sure you set the max analog value to 4095 if you're using an ESP32. Otherwise, if you're using an Arduino Nano or another board that has 10-bit analog, keep it at 1023. Now you can go ahead and save it. Keep in mind you're going to have to restart SteamVR each time you save. Now the first thing you're going to notice when you open SteamVR is that there are Valve Index controllers that are following your regular controllers. That's a part of Knuckles emulation and it's why we're able to get compatibility with so many games. Now if you open up SteamVR Home or any compatible game, you should be able to see your hand following the controller and your fingers being tracked. If it looks glitchy, don't worry, we still have to do the calibration stuff. Alright, before calibration, let's go ahead and mount our controllers on our hands. The driver uses the position of our controllers to figure out where our hands are, and it combines that with the finger data from the Arduinos. Because of that, we need to mount the controllers in a place that follows our hands. This is how I mount Oculus Rift controllers right under my hand using elastic straps. This is how I mount Oculus Quest 2 controllers, but you can really mount them any way you want as long as they still get tracking from the cameras. Later on, I'm also going to be releasing some 3D print files for mounting controllers, and those will help a lot with robust tracking. If you're using Vive trackers, you can also mount them like this using straps. I 3D printed this bottom piece that holds it right on. Now one thing you're going to notice if you try to use the gloves right now in game is that the position of your hands might be offset or even rotated. This is because we haven't actually configured the position of our controllers or trackers on our hand in the driver yet. So you can do this in the pose settings and the driver settings from before. So if there's a shift in the position of the controller and you need to translate that back, you can do that by changing the X, Y, and Z offset position values. Now if the rotation on the controller is wrong, then you can fix that by changing the X, Y, and Z offset degrees values. I recommend changing each setting one at a time in small increments and checking in Steam VR to see what the difference is in the actual controller. This is going to take some trial and error, and it can be pretty tedious especially when you have to restart Steam VR, but this is something that we're going to try to automate later on. The next thing to do is calibrate your finger positions, and this is pretty easy because the firmware does this automatically already. All you have to do is make sure the glove is on your hand when you turn on the Arduino, and fully open and close your hand a few times to calibrate it. 
Now the glove finger tracking should be working properly, not just in Steam VR Home, but in any game you want to try. Joysticks should also be working as well. Now have fun with it. It should work in any VR game that supports Valve Index controllers, as long as you have emulation on. Let me know what games you want me to try with these gloves in the description. I've already tried them with Boneworks, Blade and Sorcery, VR Chat, Half-Life Alex, and even more. So far the glove has been communicating with our driver by using a USB cable, but what if we want to do it over Bluetooth so that we're not attached to the computer at all? Well in that case our regular Arduino Nanos aren't going to cut it. Instead, as a cheap option for a Bluetooth board, I recommend using ESP32 development boards. They come in a variety of different sizes, so you may have to wire them differently based on the wiring diagram for that board. This is an ESP Room32 dev board. I found them for as cheap as $4-$5 to $5 each. Another option that I recommend are these ESP32 Room32 U boards. It's an unnecessarily complicated name for what is basically the same thing but lets you use an external antenna, so it gives you much better range and reliability. The team at Arduino was nice enough to send me one of their Nano 33 BLEs and one of their new Nano RP2040 Connect boards. I'm working on getting this set up to work with our driver, but keep in mind these are much higher end boards. Now for an ESP32, here's how you're going to set up Bluetooth in the firmware. Up in the communication section, you're going to change com serial to com underscore BT serial. This is going to make the glove use Bluetooth serial instead of USB serial communication. Now choose a Bluetooth device name. Keep in mind you're going to need a different device name for the left and right hand if you're using both. Now go ahead and upload that to the ESP32. Now let's pair the gloves to our PC. Open the Bluetooth settings in Windows and add a new Bluetooth device. Then click the device that has the same name that you put in your firmware. After that, once it's paired, we can go ahead and configure it in the driver. Back in the driver settings, all you have to do is change USB serial to Bluetooth serial. And then just make sure the left name and or right name match the names that you put in the firmware. Once that's done, you can now use the gloves just like normal, but you don't have to be tethered to the PC at all. It works great with Oculus Air Link. This raises the question though, if you're not plugged into the computer at all, how is the glove getting power? So there's a couple different ways we can go about this. One is you can use AA batteries or 37 volt LiPos, but my preferred solution and the one that I think is the easiest is just to use USB battery packs. This way you don't have to wire anything differently, you can still go straight through the USB port and it has enough power to last a while. You can either mount your batteries on your wrists or put them in your pockets. This is a sneak peek of what Prototype 4 looks like. It's a haptic feedback glove. That means when you grab things in the game, it stops the strings to make it feel like you're actually holding something. I'm using 9 gram RC servos to do this. We still have a lot of software work to actually get this working in VR games, but with our awesome community, I'm sure we can get there. Thank you guys so much for watching the whole video. I really wasn't expecting this project to blow up as much as it has, so it means a lot to me that you guys are really interested in this. I've been working on this project non-stop for the past six months. If you guys have any difficulty building the gloves or get stuck on any step, feel free to join the Discord server. We have tons of people there that have already built their own gloves and love to help out other people. So definitely check out the server if you need any help. If you're interested to see this project keep getting better and better, definitely subscribe to the channel. I also have a couple other projects that I want to work on as well. One of them has to do with getting rid of that joystick. Thank you so much to all my patrons on Patreon, especially my beaters like Kumi, Mark Holmes, Michael Ambrose, Stefan, RNMU, Rockman Fire, and SXP.